Hey divers, Alec Pierce Scuba, Vintage Scuba. We're going to talk tonight, tonight, today, <laughs> it is nighttime, but anyway, today, about a very, very simple piece of equipment. One of the most basic pieces of equipment that we use as scuba divers and skin divers, and that's the snorkel. You know very well that, that you know, snorkel's been around for a long, long time. You have all know the stories about years ago, somebody hiding from pharaoh's soldiers and they you know laid down with a piece of reed and so on the invention of the snorkel right um anyway uh i have no idea how it got invented probably something just that simple or maybe some kid playing but um, the snorkel has become an absolutely essential piece of equipment for water sports in general it isn't just scuba divers and snorkelers that wear snorkels swimmers use them as well but for snorkelers you have to have a snorkel hence the word snorkelers do i need to draw a picture yeah, see, a snorkeler or a skin diver uses a mask and fins. And he uses a snorkel as well. Because if you don't have, don't stop laughing, Kevin. If you don't have a snorkel, then you have to keep lifting your head up. The <laughs> Hold your breath in. <laughs> it's just no fun. With a snorkel, you can swim along and look for fish and bars of gold and everything else. And on you go. With a little bit of skill, you take a big breath of air through the snorkel, dive down, and away you go. So the snorkels are pretty, pretty simple. Actually, it's just a tube, just a bent tube. I guess the first one was just a piece of garden hose or a piece of rubber hose or bent hose. They didn't have rubber, did they, in Egypt? I don't think so. So anyway, whatever they had. So the, the first snorkels were simple. J-type snorkel, the J-snorkel, whatever you want to call it. This is about the simplest type of snorkel that you can possibly have. It's a plastic tube, bent, and it's got a sort of a half, uh, half rubber mouthpiece on it. It's... This is pretty basic, this particular snorkel. You put it in your mouth, and you breathe in, and you can swim along. That's as simple as it is. And this is a very old one as well. I know it's old for a couple of reasons. I know it's old because I know it's old. Uh, this is one of my snorkels from my vintage collection, and this snorkel is from the, from the 60s. If, in fact, it's that uh, late, it could be earlier, but it's, it's an old snorkel anyway. And uh, secondly, I know it's old because the size of the tube. What do you mean the size? Exactly what I said, the size of the tube. If you can take your snorkel, I snorkel and put it down inside a modern snorkel, it's old. It's old. Because initially snorkels were made out of tubes that were available. They just made out of pieces of tubes. You'd be get a piece of garden hose or whatever kind of tube you had laying around and you'd, you'd make a snorkel. And then manufacturers started to make them and they make them, made them the same. Uh, effectively, the tube was small. It might have been, oh, that's maybe a bit more than a half an inch in diameter. And, and, and they did all kinds of experimentation right from the very beginning as manufacturers started to make snorkels and make money at them to want to make them better. You understand how that works. You make it better, then you'll sell more than the other guy. And then, of course, he gets a great idea, makes it better, he sells more than you. I need a better idea, and that's how development works. It, it works really, really well. But the first snorkels were just made from a plastic tube that was available, that was narrow. And, and then about all they could do was make a different mouthpiece, and they started to make better mouthpieces. Eventually, they made better mouthpieces. This is a little better mouthpiece on there. You see, it's a little better shape and so on. And that, some of them would make them a bit longer. So you might have snorkels that were maybe 18 inches long. That was good for deep snorkeling, right? That's a bit of a joke. But anyway, what they began to found, what they, they found out was that narrow, small diameter, long snorkels don't work very well. Well, they work. They don't work very well. The reason they don't work very well is that eventually you can't breathe through them anymore. You have to stop and take a breath of fresh air. Because what happens is, <clears throat> when you inhale, you get inhale fresh air from the atmosphere. When you exhale, you blow that air out. But the last bit of air that's left in the snorkel after you finish exhaling is exhaled air. You just haven't blown it all the way out. So there's carbon dioxide, increased level of carbon dioxide in it. So now you inhale, and you inhale some fresh air, along with that tube full of exhaled carbon dioxide, and then you push it back out, and you inhale it again, increase, and so as slowly after a period of time, the air that you're drawing back in in your lungs is getting more and more carbon dioxide, and so eventually you get out of breath. That's what carbon dioxide makes you do. It makes you breathe more and more. Your body does that so that you will get fresh oxygen, and there's no, there's no, there's no solution to that other than taking this out of your mouth, coming to the surface, breathing for a few minutes and getting, getting your, your breath back. That's the first thing they discovered. It, quite frankly, it could be dangerous because it stored up carbon dioxide. The other thing they found was that, that it was hard to breathe the air in and blow it out. The tube was small, so it took a fair bit of force to force the air through that small orifice. Let's call it an orifice, just like a modern regulator. The orifices need to be big so it's easy. The air flows easy. You get a lot of volume. 
these don't have much volume. So one of the very first things they did was they increased the size of the tube. So the snorkel I just showed you a second ago, this improved snorkel is much, much bigger. It's an inch in diameter on the inside. It's called the Big Bore. Well, one company called it the Big Bore. Each company had their own, uh, their own Easy Breathe, all those kind of names, Big Bore and so on, to uh, differentiate themselves from other manufacturers, you see. And they found that this Big Bore, in fact, worked really, really well. We're going to come back to that in just a minute. Another thing they found was this. This snorkel might fit me really, really well, but it might not fit Kevin very well. He has a strange mouth. And it might not fit someone with a very small mouth. And it might not fit some of the bit. You know, so the point is that this, this mouthpiece is what it is. You can't adjust it. You can't change it. So one of the first things they discovered, one of the uh, innovations, good or bad, is academic, was a flexible snorkel, you see? So here's your tube. And you notice this tube is still pretty thin, still pretty small diameter. But now they've attached a flexible mouthpiece on it. So the flexible mouthpiece can be bent any direction, put into your mouth, much, much more comfortable. This is actually a pretty common style of snorkel used even today, although for a different reason. Today it's used by scuba divers, so when you take this out of your mouth, the mouthpiece falls out of the way and you can put the scuba regulator in. But this is one of the earliest, uh, earliest innovations, this flexible mouthpiece, flexible hose. And there were lots of those made. Here's a, here's a brand spanky new one made by Swimmaster. Now Swimmaster hasn't been around since the 60s, so there they go. And they call theirs the Bellow Flex. It is right down there. A bellow flex. Nobody else had a bellow flex. They all had flex hoses, almost identical, but nobody had the bellow flex, you see. So Swim Master could market the bellow flex as being the best. And there is exactly the same type of thing. Another one from another company that you know very, very well, Aqualung, U.S. Divers, same type of thing. Theirs look like this. Big bore on it now, and a bellow flex. We're going to come back to the big floor in just a minute. They didn't call it the bellow flex, though. They called it the, they just called it the flex. Flex dive snorkel. So theirs was the flex. Flex, bellow flex, whatever name it was. That was an early innovation. Now another innovation that came along fairly early on was, was a, 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 a mechanism, a device to keep water out of the snorkel. Because a perennial, a perennial complaint with snorkelers, and it still is today. I'm working in the dive store and someone comes in and says, I want to buy a snorkel, but I want to get one that doesn't let water into it. Well, you and I know if you're a diver, uh, that snorkel doesn't exist. If there was a snorkel that never let water in, it'd be the only snorkel we'd ever sell. But there are snorkels that let, let less water in because they have some type of a non-return valve or a dry snorkel, as it's commonly called today. Back in the old days, in the 50s and 60s, the non-return valve or the dry top was a very simple mechanism. It was literally a little rubber cage, just a little rubber cage that snapped on the end of the snorkel, and inside it had a ping pong ball. Yep. A ping pong ball. If you lost this, you can just go and get a ping pong ball and stick it in there. And, and of course, the theory is, you see, this is a solid plastic tube with a rubber mouthpiece. The theory is you, you swim along, and if you go underwater, the water pushes the ping pong ball up and plugs the tube. So the water doesn't go down the tube. Well, it worked uh, reasonably well. It wasn't perfect. Not perfect at all, because that seal wasn't a very good seal, but at least it worked. But even then, yeah, these, these tubes were small, not very efficient. There's another, I'll just show you this one quickly. There's another version, another improved version, I don't know, another version, straight plastic tube, rubber mouthpiece, and a ping pong ball, different type of cage on there, same type of ping pong ball. The biggest innovation or the, the biggest improvement in snorkels was undoubtedly the big bore. Because once they got the big bore, snorkels, and there was actually, as I say, a snorkel called the Big Bore. I think it was Decor had the Big Bore. I'm guessing here, but it could be. Then the snorkels began to improve. And, and there were many, many versions. By now they had a rubber mouthpiece that was much more flexible. There are many, many versions. Let me just show you quickly. These two snorkels, both made by Decor, big, big company, and uh, Glow Top. They had that thing on the top there, that bright thing on the top that was supposed to warn, you know, you could see, you could see your buddy Keep boats away, I suppose, and so on. And there's two snorkels, and they're virtually identical. Both big bore. Very important. But the biggest difference between these two is, you see how the one snorkel is perfectly straight, and this snorkel is bent. What's with the bend? Well, it's very simple. If you have a straight snorkel, and you're swimming with a straight snorkel, watch the top of the snorkel, you're swimming along, you're finning it back and forth like this, you see how the one side, when I go that way, it could dip below the water. Won't dip below the water this way, but it goes that way, below the water, clear below the water. So they found, eh, rightly so, they, they decided anyway, they said if we put the hose opening in the middle of the head, ah, like that, you see, same tilt both ways. 
So it lessens the likelihood of water coming into the snorkel. Eh, I don't know if it's a big deal, but anyway, it came along. Another, I wanted to show you another one. Oh, yeah, this was the, the bellow top. Bellow top? Yeah, I think it was called the bellow top or the flare top. You see the difference there? Both big bore snorkels, but the top of this one is straight. This one has a little bellow on it, like, the, like a, a flare on it. I don't know if it helped or not, but maybe it helped their sails. Eh? That was a different one. Now, what happened next was pretty interesting. The mouthpiece was always an issue. So what they wanted to try to do was to change the shape of the mouthpiece. And there were different ways to do that. This snorkel, very popular snorkel from Healthways, another big company from many, many years ago. Big bore, good solid tube, nice, soft, smooth rubber mouthpiece. But look, you see how the mouthpiece is bent? You see the tube is straight up, the mouthpiece is bent that way. So this actually fit into your mouth quite comfortably. It wasn't twisting and pulling on your mouth. It fit quite comfortably. How can you improve on that, huh? Well, suppose you improve on that by making the mouthpiece adjustable. So that Kevin, you see, he'd have his down like this because he's built kind of weird. Most people would have it about like this. Some people may be up like so. But you can actually make this one fit your mouth perfectly. So this is almost perfect. Look at this. Big bore, bend, middle of the head, and adjustable mouthpiece. Wow, that's fantastic. That's incredible. How can you possibly improve on that? Well, suppose we do this. Suppose we get big bore, bend, nice soft rubber mouthpiece, adjustable, and moldable, mouth, moldable teeth bits. You see here? Can you see that, Kevin? <clears throat> you see those orange plastic bits on the mouthpiece? Now, this is pretty neat. You would take that snorkel and put it in boiling water, just the mouthpiece, for a few minutes, take it out of the boiling water, and quickly Jam it in your mouth. No, no, don't do that. You'll put it in boiling water, and wait for a second, shake it off for a second, put it in your mouth, and bite down on those bites like this. You hold it down there for a minute until they cool. And these take the shape of your teeth. What's the benefit of that? Well, there are, there are actually two benefits to that. The first benefit is that it takes the shape of your teeth. So when you put it in your mouth, your teeth fall naturally into the grooves that you've made, and you don't have to hang on really tight. You don't get sore jobs. It stays in your mouth much more easily. And the second benefit is your buddy won't borrow it because they look pretty gross. The buddy won't borrow it. So anyway, there's some of the differences in the, in the snorkels. Adjustable, bellow top. Now, oh, oh, I forgot about the purge. The purge. Now, you know where we're going, don't you? Eventually, we're going to get to a modern snorkel. Now, if you go into a dive store today, this is what you're going to find. So here's the snorkel. You've got a big bore, okay? And it's got a nice rubber, flexible mouthpiece, easy to put in your mouth. And it has a purge valve. I need a little purge valve. What's a purge valve? Well, a purge valve is a valve that has a rubber flap that only goes out. When you suck on this, it closes so water can't go in. So now when you breathe in, that closes, you get air down through the top. But when you blow out, this opens, and the water that might be in the tube, if there is any water, will go out through the bottom. Some will go up the top, some will go down the bottom. The point is that it's much easier to clear. It just makes it easy to clear. You always get water in your snorkel. Even if you have a, a bellow top or a dry top, doesn't matter. Eventually, occasionally, you're going to get a bit of water in the snorkel. With this purge valve, now you're... A little blow, and the water comes out very, very easily. Just that simple. Modern snorkels, they have all of those advantages. They're all big bore. They're lifetime guaranteed at some dive stores, good dive stores. Anyway, have a lifetime guarantee because they're made of indestructible materials. They have a purge, modern purge, made of silicone, so it doesn't dry out and crack and start to leak. It'll last forever. They have an adjustable mouthpiece. You can get moldable bits. They have all those features, the good features. All those features put together to make a modern snorkel and a dry top as well. Quick clips. They used to have a rubber, a piece of rubber to attach this to your mask. Oh, they were a nuisance to get them off and on. Now most modern snorkels have a very solid, very reliable, very dependable clip that snaps onto your mask and stays where it belongs. Let me show you a couple more just before we end up. Here's a weird one. Okay, looks pretty good. Big bore, nice bend to it. It goes in your mouth like this. Right over top of your mask. I don't know. And here's one more. Here's one more snorkel. As you know, some people complain snorkels are a nuisance to carry around. Yeah, they can be. But there are various versions. There are actually snorkels that you can buy now that roll up into a little ball like this. Stick them into your BC and they disappear. When you need it, you reach in, pull it out, pop it out, and it becomes an actual snorkel. This is an earlier version of a collapsible snorkel. Pretty good. Big bore, flexible, mouthpiece, purge, all that. And to go snorkeling, you just pull it out like so, and off you go. <laughs> when you want to get rid of it, put it away like that, put it in your BC pocket, off you go. So there you go, folks. 
couple of interesting snorkels in the old days. We have just looked at about 50 years of snorkel development. I bet you didn't think that it took 50 years to develop the snorkel that you have now or that are in the dive stores. Yeah, it did. Took a long time. A lot of improvements, a lot of frustrated divers, and a lot of silly ideas came along over those years. But eventually now we have a good snorkel. All the good aspects. Big, doesn't get too dry, purges, fits your mouth, is comfortable, so we can enjoy snorkeling a great deal. I hope there's something there that interested you, something new and interesting. Make sure you send me some comments. Alec Pierce. Vintage Scuba.